In this video, we'll have a look at how you can seamlessly integrate the source control tool into your development process. I'll start from creating a new database and then I can make sure that it's completely empty. On the next step, we create two tables and a foreign key to link them together. Now we can see our database contains a couple of tables. Then I create a new project inside Visual Studio Team Services Git repository. And I copy its URL. Now it's time to link our database to the remote Git repository. To do so, simply select Git from the list. Paste the URL to the repository and enter the authentication credential. We can click Test Connection to check if everything is fine. Now we need to decide which development model we are going to use, either shared or dedicated. I'll start from shared one. Click OK. The source control tool automatically scans our database and the remote repository at the same time. It detects two local changes that the repository is missing. I simply select these tables and commit them to our source control system. I add a command before commit and then click the commit button. This time there are no changes to display. By clicking on files, we can see our tables stored in the repository. Let's modify our table by adding a column and a check constraint. Then switch to the source control manager window. The source control tool detects a local change and shows the script difference with the same object located in the remote repository. I commit this change as well. Let's switch to the VSTS to see what we got there. We can observe every single commit in the project history. Now let's see what happens when the other developer commits some changes to the repository. The source control tool detects the outside changes and notifies you that the local database has been missing this object. In this case, you need to click the undo button to add the missing object to the database. In the following part of this video, we'll have a look at what's gonna change if we use the dedicated development model. To proceed, I create a new database called Sandbox. And then I populate this database with two tables. The same way, we link the database to the source control, but this time I select the dedicated development model option. Once synchronization completed, I can commit our tables to the source control. Then I modify the table by adding a column and a check constraint. The source control tool detects a local change and shows the script difference with the same object located in the remote repository. I add a command and commit this to the source control. Inside the source control, we can open the table object to make sure that our change is being stored in the project. Now let's simulate the remote change. I simply added the column data type inside the repository. I want to commit this change right immediately. Let's switch back to the SMS. This time, 
we have one remote change. Also, we can see the exact difference in code. In case we agree with that change, we can select one and click Get Latest. The tool automatically scans both the local database and the remote repository. If we refresh the Object Explorer, we can see that the column data type has been changed. To simulate the concurrent change, we need to modify the same object in the repository and inside the database. In the database, I have to delete this column first and recreate with an another data type. Additionally, I'd like to add a new check constraint to the salary column. I save local changes and switch to the source control manager window. Once synchronization is completed, we got the conflict. It happened because we have two different modifications for the same object. The code preview area clearly shows the difference in data types. Also, it shows one extra change for the local object. At this point, I need to decide what change is correct. I suppose that my modifications are correct and I want to commit them. To do so, I select the object in the list and click Get Local. Then Command and Commit. Now I refresh the repository to demonstrate that all changes have been applied correctly. In addition, the tool provides you with the entire change history. If you want to clone your objects from one environment to another, you can use Schema Compare for SQL Server. Let's create a new production database. Then, inside the Schema Comparison tool, we can set up the comparison between our production database and any revision from the remote repository we worked with previously. The revision history window allows us to go through an entire commit history list and pick a required one to compare with. I found a commit where we added two tables. So let's select it for the comparison and click compare. At the comparison result, I can see that both objects are missing in the target database. I click Synchronize. Then I have several options to choose. I want to execute the sync script against the target database. Then I can switch back to the studio and make sure that all objects appear in the production database. That's it. Thank you for watching.